What's going on, y'all? Thanks for tuning back in here to another episode here on the Speedbug channel. Figured I'd give you a little insight on a build, the one I was doing in the scenes for a customer here behind me. Now let's go over the build here and I'll give you some uh, rundown of the parts and some numbers. I'm getting ready to deliver this car to the customer today. So we got a 2019 ZL1 here and we did everything heads cam, everything from the short block up. It still has a stock short block. Uh, we have a Joker's ported blower. We have a 9-1 lower and a 2-4-5 upper. K-Tech 103, Rotofab Big Gulp, DSX Auxiliary. Uh, we have LME ported heads, factory casting with their workings redone. The PCV, uh, we use the factory PCV here on the ZL1s, which works fantastic and great. Uh, we have ARH long tube headers, Corsa exhaust, and some suspension mods down on the back. Why did I go with this setup? Well, today it is 98 degrees with 81% humidity today in Florida. And the car made 720 wheel on a chassis dyno, and it only has got 16 degrees of timing in it. Why is it low or why is it not low? No E85, no meth, no nothing. So it's actually really good. And it did that back to back to back. And in three pulls, it only lost one horsepower. The customer wants to drive this. They have 38,000 miles on this vehicle and they want to keep driving it that way. On a cold pull, it made about 750 and on some cooler weather, it may make 760. Now, if I put some more timing and uh, jump up the fuel and things like that and change the tune up a little bit, could I make 760, 780? Yes. Is it worth it? Absolutely not. And why would you want to run it on kill so that, well, you get a bad batch of gas or anything like that? Well, then it's that's just the end of it, you know, and you're one oops away from not having an engine no more. So is that 50 horse realistically even worth it? Absolutely not. So the customer will be happy with this. They can keep their foot on the floor. Second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, and seventh gear will max out at 199 miles an hour and they can keep going and it will not pull timing and it does not overheat. The IATs and the MATs stay 100% intact. Also to mention, to keep that intact, we have the AFCO heat exchanger, but I am recommending to the customer to have an auxiliary expansion tank if they want to do stuff like that or stay on the road course and keep their foot on the floor. If you do E85 or you do add meth, there's nothing wrong with that. Um, I don't really like to do uh, E85 at this power level solely and only because you're almost out of injector window and i like to keep them happy sure you can go past you know what the recommended section is i'm not going to say a specific number because everybody has a, a, a different preference on that but the real right way to do it is to add port injection not a big fan of meth i love the properties of methanol but i don't like the car being reliant on methanol for cooling or octane so that's why i no longer do it or offer it anymore to my customers or builds Give y'all here a nice look underneath the vehicle. You could see our long tube headers going into our wonderful H-pipe with our BMR suspension out to our Corsa catback exhaust. This is a highly recommend, uh, recommended uh, modification that I uh, advise all cust uh, customer and Camaro owners to do on ZL1s specifically. Uh, not so much the SSs because they don't make as much power, uh, but the ZL1 specifically is the deflection in these rear arms. They're a little pricey, but oh my God, when you step on them, the car stays straight and it tracks straight and the EF, uh, the electronic diff does exactly what you tell it to do and the car goes straight as it should. He already had the R888 tires uh, getting down to the wear indicator, so eventually we'll uh, go ahead and get him another set of tires, but we also did a four wheel alignment on this thing and got everything uh, within spec and where I like it to be and the car drives fantastic and sounds great. So I'll give you guys a start up so you guys can hear uh, what this cam sounds like. Uh, it's got quite a bit of overlap, which is great, which the customer wanted. And uh, it gets that old school muscle. Again, now keep in mind, 
This is 720 wheel, three dyno pulls, back to back to back. The third one was 719.8 something. I, I can't remember. And it was at like 6,600 RPM. But bottom line, 720 in 97 degree heat. No meth, no E85, straight 93 pump octane. And that is a solid number for anyone that knows how to tune these vehicles on an LT, LS, knows that it is a solid number for pump gas that you could drive it every day. And I figured out how to make it reliable and to do it correctly. Not saying that other companies that go out there when they provide a package similar to mine or do, or do a tuning or a situation or calibration just like mine and they end up with 670 or 680, what everybody feels comfortable with, uh, as a window as far as detonation and pre-ignition and what they want to give to their customers and things like that, absolutely, I completely agree with them and they, I don't knock their packages or I don't think mine's better than theirs just because mine made 20 or 30 more wheel than the other guy. Their camshaft, their specs, their intake, whatever it is, that their calibration is different than mine and they have their customer base and obviously it's working for them, that's why they're in business. So. Uh, don't always go off of the peak number. The uh, torque curve and the uh, horsepower curve uh, says a lot within the tune. Also, the parts that you put inside the engine and how the engine breathes. So let me start this thing up and give you a, uh, a quick sound clip. Well, that's already warmed up. I want to say the car's like 175, 180 degrees. I just took it out for its last test drive before the customer comes in. Hope you all enjoyed this view, uh, video. I hope you all enjoyed the viewing this. I appreciate you viewing it. Like and subscribe. If you have any other questions, feel free to comment below. I'll try and answer them as best as possible as I have with all my other stuff. And uh, we'll see you on the next one. Thanks for tuning in.